Hello everyone. Monday, November 4th. A couple of days from New Comic Book Day. And I was going through some emails the last couple of days and I had a subscriber ask me, hey, you know, you've done uh, great videos on how you grade books, how you protect books. I want to know how you find an accurate price for books. So I thought, you know what? Okay. I'm going to tell you how I do it. Now, before I get started, like with everything, everybody has their own way of doing it. Doesn't mean that mine is better and theirs is worse. This is just the way I do it. I find this way to be very accurate. I find that when you uh, price a book out like this, you'll have zero argument because people can see it in black and white. So the way I'm going to tell you is worked fantastic for me, and I know it'll work fantastic for you. And I'm sure several of you are already doing this. This is not something that is, you know, my own personal little, you know, I, I do this and no one else does it. I'm sure a lot of people do this, but this is the most, to me, the most consistent and accurate way to price books. Now, for this type of thing, this is for mostly newer releases, not older releases. So let's talk about the history of me purchasing books. Uh, when I started collecting comics in the 70s, mid-70s, 75, 76, I bought my books at a 7-Eleven, like I've stated in other videos, and I bought my books based off of how cool the cover looked. So I was drawn to covers that had, you know, uh, war. So I was, you know, our army at war, Sergeant Rock, Sergeant Fury, Blitzkrieg, things of that nature. And then books that had, you know, cool covers and scary covers. So uh, I would look at the rack. It was one of those spinning racks. And I'd spin the rack and I'd find the book that I wanted or, you know, multiple books depending on how much money I had. Uh, never more than a couple of dollars in my pocket back then, but that was a lot of money back then. So I'd buy my books. I'd buy my Slurpee in my collector cup, whichever it happened to be, whether it be football, baseball, or they had the superhero cups at one time, and off I would go. And I didn't think about the price of the books. As I became more involved in collecting comics and became more knowledgeable in collecting comics, I wanted to know what my books were worth. The only way you could do that back then, for the most part, was by the Overstreet. People still use the Overstreet today. This is the quote-unquote Bible of comic collecting. And it has a lot of good points, but for the most part, it is for older books. Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age, books of that nature. So, when I started going to comic shops, I started going to comic shops in the, in the early 80s, you know, 81, 82, and you would look and see different books and you realize, you know, protecting your books were important at that time and, and just and doing things. So, you know, if I had a Sergeant Rock and I looked in the Overstreet and my Sergeant Rock was $20, I had a $20 book. Comic shops at that time priced off of the Overstreet. There was no other way to do it. Of course, as technology gets more and more involved, there are other ways in which to do things. So we are going to now fast forward to where we are today, modern day. For the most part, I still use the Overstreet as a good gauge, and most dealers will use the Overstreet for, like I stated before, Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age, and so on. But then you come up with the newer hot books that come out. I'm not talking about the 90s. I stopped collecting in the 90s because I saw what a lot of people didn't see was a saturation of crappy ass books using a little twist to try to get people to collect them, whether it be hologram covers or limited edition covers or things that they said limited and you find out that it was limited to 100,000, that's not limited. So you have a saturation of 90s books that you now find in 25 cent bin. I stopped collecting books in about 85, 86 and concentrated on baseball, football cards, basketball cards, hockey cards, and did very well with those. Until, again, I saw a saturation of that stuff uh, through the late 80s and 90s, and I started collect collecting older stuff only. I still collected older comics, stayed away from the newer comics. But now, in today's age, they have a much better way of doing things, and the books are much more limited. So, everything comes out 
you know, recently uh, the villain's covers, the three-dimensional covers, how are you going to find out what a villain cover is worth? You go on eBay and you look at eBay. So I am going to show you how I would price out books and get what I opinion, what my opinion is the most accurate way to get a price on a book. And for this demonstration, we are going to use first printing Saga number one. There it is, protected in nice mylar, super clean book, 9496, very nice. The Overstreet lists this particular book as $50 in a 9.2. Very good price for a book that has a $2.99 cover price on it, which is only basically a couple of years old. So you're not going to find this book for $50. So what I do is I go to eBay and I look at the five most recent sales of a particular book and I include shipping. People, you have to include shipping because that is part of the cost factor on the book. If you buy the book for 99 cents and you pay $8 shipping, don't tell me you paid 99 cents for the book. You paid $9, $8.99 for the book. So that's an $8.99 book, not a 99 cent book. If I give you a dollar, you get it. So always include shipping. Now I've already done some late work and the last five copies of this book, Saga number one, first printing, and you have to look and make sure that the first printing is, in, it is identical to what you have in your hand is what has sold. So you have to really take the time to read the, you know, look at the, each auction and make sure that that's what it is. The last five books with shipping sold on eBay for a combined total of $370.79. You divide that by five, each book has an average sell price of $74.16 with shipping. Which tells me this is a, for the most part, a $70 book, a $75 book. I'm sure you can probably find them in comic shops for 60, 65 bucks. But people sit there and say, you know, well that's not a good way of doing it because, you know, there's no way of knowing that sale. Look, it's black and white. How many times have you got into a comic shop and everybody has done this? Let me put this book away. You go into a comic shop and they have a hot book, and the dealer says, let me take a look at what it's going for on eBay. Of course. A toy, a figurine. Let me see what it's going for on eBay. You know, a high-priced item. Well, let me see what it's going for on eBay. That is what dealers use now, because they have the ability with the technology to look at up-to-date sales Worldwide, this is worldwide. This isn't, you know, eBay isn't, you know, you know, Tim's Comic Dungeon with one price in there. This is worldwide. You can look at the last five sales, and you can do it for the last ten sales or whatever. I like the last five sales because you can say these are the last five books that sold everywhere, and this is the average price. And you can do it with the collector or the or the customer right in front of you, and they can't argue with you. They'll argue with you, but they can't. It's what it sold for. I'm looking at one right here. It sold two days ago. It was in Anderson, California. Sold for $69. 18 people bid on it. And it had a $4.50 uh, shipping charge, which brings your total to $73.49 or $74 or $73.50. Right around the average price. There's a couple in there that sold for $60. People said, ooh, I'll buy the one for $60 and not $69. But they were charging $10, $11 for shipping, which is ridiculous for a single book. I don't care what you're selling. There's a couple that had, there's one that had free shipping. There's a couple that had high shipping, average shipping, $399, $450, $599. That's pretty much the going rate for a shipped book. I think it's a little high, but you know what? It is what it is. People understand that when they bid on it. If you bid on a book and you don't like the shipping cost, don't bid on the book. You know, but when you're sitting there looking at your collection and deciding how much a book is worth, add the shipping. If you don't add the shipping, you are selling yourself short or you're not being fair to yourself because if you buy the book for 99 cents and you sell it at a show for $6 and say, yeah, I made $5 on that book. No, you didn't. You lost. 
money because you probably paid for shipping or you made a dollar fifty or something. So be honest with that. That is the best way to do it. That is the best way to do it. There is no need to pay. I had one collector send me a thing and say, hey, you know, I pay X amount of money a month and I belong to this service and they will give me up to second prices, up to the minute prices on things that are selling as they sell. Why pay for it? They're using eBay. I know someone who has a company like that. He has people who subscribe to him. He uses eBay. His information is based off of eBay. Very little do they use Amazon because eBay turns over more product than anybody else. That's what they're going to go by. It's like, a, it's like a credit score company. Credit scores will throw out the top, they'll throw out the bottom, and they'll balance it out. They'll average out your scores. That's an accepted practice for credit scores. It's an accepted practice for pricing comic books. And the good thing about this, you can price anything like this. Because I guarantee you, you can bring up any book and you're going to find sales on that book. The most important thing to remember, though, is don't type in, don't use the completed sale area. Use the sold sale. Use the sold sale. And you can't use the best offers because you don't know. Look, Overstreet can say a book is worth $1,000. If the last 5 to 10 books sell for an average of $265, as far as I'm concerned, that book is worth $265, and that's what I'll pay for it. Okay, it's not it's not what it is, but you know, there are collectors who sit there and go by the guide. I guarantee you, if you look at a person for the most part who has a shop and has a successful shop, and he's got older books on the wall, this is what he's using for his older books. This is what he's using as a start-off guide for his graded books. Newer books, the villain 3D covers, or you use talking saga or, you know, Peter Panzerfest, or, or Peter Panzerfest, whatever. Whatever they're using, this is what they're using. They're using eBay. That works best for me. It'll work best for you. I like it because I know exactly what my book is worth. I go into my comic shop, and my comic dealer all the time says, hey, have you looked and seen what that book is worth now? No, I don't, because I'm not selling my books. But if I need to sell something, or I'm using something in trade, and they'll say, what's fair trade value? Fair trade value is going to be what the last few of them sold out, and you're going to balance that out. And again, this way might not be for everybody. But this way, and I don't think a lot of people can argue. Well, people will argue. They always do. But this is it's, it's black and white. It's right there. It tells you exactly what the item sold for. I want $1,000 for this pen, but the last three sold for $5. I'll give it to you for $5. <laughs> Want and reality are two separate things. Everybody thinks their collection is the greatest collection in the world. Be honest with your collection. Be honest with its value. It's just like grading. You have to be honest with yourself when you grade a book. Be honest with yourself when you, do, when you see it. Don't look at the first one and say, oh, it sold for $95 and say that because the other ones have sold for $35 and the guy who bought it for $95 probably has no clue and just click to buy it now. I don't like to look at the buy it nows. I always like to see what people are bidding on it. Like this particular one that sold for $69 had, and you can look at this, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different people fighting for it, which means, and the last bid was, the other bid before that was around $68. So, uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot of people figuring this book is worth over $60. So, again, book that was used. Saga number one, first print, very pretty book, sitting in the in the Mylar, and this was how I protected it. Mylar and Mylar. Uh, gives you the double protection. So, again, this was just a real quick video on how I do something. Um, it's not really a rant. It was just more of a observation and trying to answer a question of a subscriber the best way that I could. Um, if you have other ways to do it that doesn't include, uh, you know, subscribing to a monthly pay service, I would love to hear it. Uh, but I'm never going to pay for a service to tell me how much a book is worth when I have a free service sitting right in front of me and I just got to do a little legwork to do it. So uh, again, real quick video. I hope it was informative. I hope some of you may try it just to get an idea 
grab a couple of books and, and see how it works. And I guarantee you, you'll start liking it and start using it. So, uh, and this was free information. All my information is free. So, as always, I hope you liked the video. But if you didn't, nothing I can do for you. Have a great night.